and welcome to another episode of Zen Sandwich. I am your host, Mark Reed, and today I'm diving into a topic that might truly transform your life. I hope so. How to be great at anything in three steps, whether it's mastering the art of chess or art itself, becoming fluent in a foreign language, or excelling at your chosen profession. These three steps can set you on the path to greatness. So grab a pen and paper because you're going to want to take notes on this one. You're listening to Zen Sandwich, a podcast for the independent mind and anyone who embraces life despite its absurdities. Join former attorney and professor turned Japanese papermaker Mark Reed each week as he talks with creative, inspiring, and influential people, or as he shares his own research to help make your world a little better today than it was yesterday. Hey, before we begin, Zen Sandwich could use your help if you've got a fiver lying around and you want to help out the show, help uh, keep me doing what I'm doing. If you enjoy the episodes, go to zensandwich.com. There's two ways to help the show. One's through Patreon. The other's just a direct donation through PayPal. Either way works. And uh, every little bit helps and makes my day. So, uh, yeah, go to zensandwich.com. All right. Step one, folks. Some of you probably already know this one, but it's all about the 80-20 Pareto rule. Now, uh, I know that sounds like some kind of fancy math concept if you don't know about it, but in reality, it's a simple principle that can revolutionize the way you approach skill development. The 80-20 rule, known as the Pareto Principle, states that roughly 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. It's about identifying the most critical tasks and focusing on them rather than spreading yourself thin. You just have to figure out what that crucial 20% is. If you're trying to become great at playing the guitar, it's the 20% most important guitar chords or, or whatever. I don't play the guitar. If you want to become a master at chess, instead of trying to memorize every possible move, focus on mastering a few key openings and strategies. That 20% of your efforts will contribute significantly to 80% of your success on the board. To give you an example that I do know firsthand, people often ask me, am I fluent in Japanese? Because I live here, I'm married to a Japanese, uh, my wife is Japanese, uh, I, I live my day-to-day -day life, uh, I, I speak more Japanese in my day-to-day -day life outside of the house, uh, I, I speak only Japanese, most people don't speak English where I live, uh, I live in the countryside. Uh, but fluency is a tricky thing to define because I often think about the highest level and that, to me, would be like a UN translator, right? That translation has to be perfect, right? So could I be a UN translator from Japanese into English? Oh, heck no, not in 20 lifetimes. Can I watch a movie in Japanese and understand what's going on, what's being said? Well, let me ask you this. Assuming most of you listening to this are native English speakers, you ever watch a movie in English and it's hard to understand? <laughs> Those of you familiar with the movie Train Spotting, early in Ewan McGregor's career, might not know that when that movie came out in the U.S., it had subtitles. It's in English, <laughs> and it had subtitles. What's my point, and what's the Pareto Principle got to do with this? Well, the 80-20 rule applies to just about everything, give or take. So in Japanese, around 80% of communication commonly used involves only about 20% of the vocabulary. That's a rough approximation, of course, and not a strict rule, but I can carry on a conversation and can catch the gist of most conversations that I overhear in Japanese. Now, can I follow a discussion on philosophy or quantum physics in Japanese? No, but that stuff's talked about way less than 20% of the time. I probably couldn't follow the physics conversation in English anyway. I had to get a master's degree in philosophy to be able to hang with that one, but I digress. Most conversations are, 
Hey, how are you? What did you do today? I'm hungry. Are you? I feel like Mexican food tonight. Hey, did you mail those postcards for me at the post office? Oh, don't forget tomorrow is trash day. I can say all of that stuff without even thinking about it in English first. I can, it just comes to me in Japanese first. Apply this 80-20 principle to any skill you're trying to acquire and watch how it streamlines your progress. On to step two. You're not going to like it. But you want to be great at something? You have to actually receive and listen to criticism and change because of it. <laughs> My voice broke there. You got to receive, listen to, and change because of criticism. I get it. Nobody likes to be told they're not perfect. But here's the truth. Feedback is a gold mine. If you want to be great at anything, you need to embrace constructive criticism. It's like having a personal coach guiding you towards improvement. Think about it this way. When you receive feedback, it's a mirror reflecting areas for growth. Maybe you're overlooking a critical detail in your work or in a relationship when you get feedback there. If you're a writer, as painful as it is, you need to hear where you suck. And we all do. No one with the exception of an occasional Mozart or Einstein that history gave us, no one writes a good first draft or creates a masterpiece, work of art or music on the first go. No one. Listening to criticism is not a sign of weakness, although the criticism is pointing out your weakness. Listening to criticism and adapting because of it is a sign of strength and a willingness to evolve. So open your ears, be receptive, be strong, hang in there, and use feedback as a tool to refine your skills. Okay, now we arrive at the third and final step. And if you thought step two sucked, well, you're really going to hit the eye roll hard on this one. There are no shortcuts to greatness, folks. The 10,000 hour rule popularized by my favorite podcaster other than myself, Malcolm Gladwell, suggests that it takes approximately 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to achieve mastery in any field. I know you're like, 10,000 hours? Come on, man. Who's got that kind of time? But look, whether you're shooting hoops, playing the guitar, or coding software, there's just no substitute for putting in the hours. That might seem daunting, but here's the silver lining. By dedicating yourself to consistent and focused practice, you can surpass 90% of the population in your chosen skill. The key is to approach it with patience and persistence. Consistency. Put in the time every day. There's actually an even bigger key I'm going to wrap up with here in a moment. But break down your journey into manageable chunks. Nobody just sits down and writes a, a novel straight through from start to finish. You outline it. You divide it into chapters. You get it down to what goes on each page. Manageable chunks. Set realistic goals and just chip away at them day by day. Every hour you invest brings you one step closer to mastery. One step closer to being better than 90% of the population at whatever it is you want to become proficient at. Okay, all that makes sense, Mark. Of course, where's the Zen in all this? Isn't this show called Zen Sandwich for a reason? Yes, yes it is. Here is your five-minute Zen and the even bigger key to success that I alluded to earlier. You might even say this is the preliminary step before you dive into the three steps I've, I've outlined in this episode. And that is the importance, nay, the necessity of enjoying the process. That's your Zen. It's easy to get caught up in the desire for quick results and reaching the destination. But true mastery is not just about the end point. It's about relishing every step along the way. When you're putting in those hours and facing challenges and absorbing feedback, remember to find joy in the small victories. 
Celebrate the progress you make, no matter how incremental it may seem. The path to greatness is a marathon, not a sprint. And if you're not enjoying the journey, you're risking burning out or losing sight of why you started in the first place. So savor the moments of growth. Each little step. Cultivate a love for the process and let the pursuit of greatness become a fulfilling adventure rather than a destination. That's it, folks. Becoming great at anything is not reserved for a select few. It's available to all of us. By mastering the 80-20 Pareto rule, the, that is finding that 20% that produces 80% of the results in whatever it is that you're trying to be great at. Find that 20%. Embrace criticism. First, got to find it. Some people, your friends won't tell you. Maybe you had to go outside of your friends and, and have someone else review your work, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's playing the guitar or chess or whatever, and embrace criticism. And finally, put it in the time. Enjoy the process while you put in that time. Do those three things, and you can elevate yourself to the top tier in whatever your chosen pursuit is. So go ahead, apply those principles. Watch and celebrate as you transform into the person you aspire to be. Thanks for tuning in. Zen Sandwich could always use your help. I know I mentioned it earlier, but if this episode helped you at all, please go to zensandwich.com and consider dropping us a fiver. Regardless, thanks so much for listening. Even if you can't donate, send me an email at zensandwich at gmail.com and tell me you enjoyed the episode. Or criticize it. I need to hear that too. Until next time, as always, breathe. Don't forget to breathe.